Hello everybody, welcome back. So today it's quite a bit different video than um, you normally find on my channel, especially on Sundays. So obviously yeah, I have a cooking channel if you're just like discovering me through this video. Um, but a lot of you guys have been asking for years and years and years for a makeup tutorial. Um, so I figured it was time to actually do one. I've always felt so awkward about filming it, um, but it's like it's time. So yeah. That's what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you how I do my makeup. This is the makeup I use for filming. So in every video, if you're wondering what I'm wearing, it is pretty much this exact thing. Um, maybe the eyeshadow changes every so often or the lipstick, but it's pretty much this. Um, so yeah, I'm so humbled that you guys want to know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's get started. I would be nervous about not being made up on camera, but I've started daily vlogging or weekly vlogging and you see me looking like a toad. So. I'm not so shy anymore. So first things first, um, I have headbands with little cat ears and these just make the process way cuter and it keeps the hair, oh my god, it's not attractive probably. Um, it keeps the hair out of my face. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll link this and everything I use ah, down below so that if you want anything, you can easily find it. I hate having hair on my face when I do my makeup. I can't like just have it become my ears. It will drive me mad. Um, okay, so this is such a new territory for me, but I usually only watch, like the only things I watch on YouTube are beauty videos pretty much. Treacle, what are you eating? This little turkey had something to say and it was not a happy thing. Oh no, you're being cute? Okay. Um, so my day started with treacle having runny poop and I had to bathe her and then Paddington just threw up. So, um, I, I just, oh my god, today. Um, normally that doesn't happen, so, <laughs> like they might be going to the vet later on. Um, anyways, okay. So, what I, um, do normally before I do my makeup is I use, um, skincare. So, what I'm currently using, it's from the face shop and I don't think they make this one anymore. I heard about it through Reddit and so I bought it on Amazon because Face Shop didn't have it and then I realized I discontinued it. So when I'm out of this, it will be a dark day. Um, it's the Tokryu and Collagen, but that part is written in Korean. Um, I'll link, I'll try to find this. If not, I'll find what they told me was like their newer version. Or no, no, I'll, I'll link the other line that I like of theirs down below as well. It's like the white seed something. It's like brightening. But this one is collagen and so it's pomegranate and collagen. So first things first, I use two pumps of the volume lifting toner and then I just like rub it onto my face. And then I use one pump of the volume lifting serum and then I use like a little bit of the face cream. So after I do all that, I let it sit in and I drink my coffee and let everything absorb until it's like nice and ready and um, I notice a difference within like a week their stuff is really really effective it's like it can get a little pricey and it hurts a little bit but um I do notice a difference so I feel like it's worth it I have my coffee in my owl mug this is called my productivity owl mug so I drink it when I need to have productive days and um it's a mind game but it works so I recommend naming your mugs if um you want to have something fun like that so yes yeah. I have a Keurig and I've had it for like three years and I love it but I'm getting tired of the flavor and now I have an espresso machine so I'm kind of just like waiting to get into that and have the lattes like that. Okay anyway um so next step is sunscreen. This is a relatively new step for me because I used to never wear sunscreen which is so stupid um but this was also a recommendation from Reddit. Reddit is a wealth of information. I love it. Um this is Japanese. It's by Nivea though. It's the sun super what? Nivea Sun Super Water Gel SPF 50 and so I got this off Amazon and they have a little like replacements or refills and the cool thing about Japan is that um, for a lot of the time I know it's like that for shampoo as well you buy the first bottle like in the bottle and then every refill you get you just get it in like a little pack like this it's the same product but it's in this little pack with a little spout that you like cut open and so you just keep the bottle even though it's empty and you refill it I feel like that's environmentally friendly so I just do like a little I like do half a pump because one pump is a lot um, so I just wrap it between my fingers 
and oh my god it's been five minutes already hopefully I can edit it down um but yeah the reason why I like this one is because it doesn't change the look of my makeup when I put makeup on top of it I was worried the reason why I put off using sunscreen for so long is because I was worried that um it would ruin my makeup once I put makeup on top of it and it would like make it like split or have that like greasy cast to it and my skin is naturally pretty dry um so I don't know if this works if you have oily skin um but for my dry skin it works well and my makeup looks exactly the same so I love that so once that's on I'm gonna put the little protective cap on it I don't even know if like you're supposed to keep this little cap or if it's just for shipping um but I'm the kind of person who like even keeps her products in the little cardboard box that they come in if it's like a special product uh so yeah that's just me are you like that too let me know and hopefully I feel better about myself okay I'm looking for my primer okay so next I use primer this is the Too Faced Proactive and Nourishing Blur um Hangover RX you can tell I am new to these kind of videos and um, I like this one because it smells nice and it's very very hydrating so on days where my skin is extra dry um and moisturizer has done its job but I feel like you could add like a little bit more moisture this really does it another one that I really like is <laughs> this <laughs> I haven't purchased this in about a year because it's really expensive and it's hard to bring myself to buy it but when I use it I'm really really happy that I'm using it it's by Guerlain it's Lo no, I don't know. Um, that means gold. And so it's primer with gold flakes in it. I got this on recommendation from Tati. And um, yesterday she posted her response or her, her video about James Charles. So it's like fresh my mind. Um, but anyways, um, so <laughs> that's like all I could think about when I say Tati. Um, this has, so it has gold in it and gold is very firming. And oh my god, it works so well. If you just do half your face, you can see a difference like within a minute or so. And then on days, like when I get used to wearing this and then days I don't wear it, I can see a difference on my face. Now I've forgotten how good it is and I kind of want to like keep forgetting because um, this is about $80 Canadian and it hurts. But it's so pretty, especially when it's full because it's empty right now. I don't know why I still have the bottle. But there's like gold flakes all in it and it just feels so luxurious. Um, but... It's like a nice, but it's not a necessary. This is still good. Um, so I just put one little, no, we do it like this. Yes, that's how we do it. One little pump. Sometimes I do two if I'm feeling extra dry. And then I rub it between my hands and I just put it everywhere and then I massage it in. You can hear Paddington. He's under my dresser. He has not been feeling well these last couple of days. In my neighborhood, there's something that has upset the dog's tummies and no one knows what it is so that's them i hope they're okay oh, oh my god all right and next this is going to seem high maintenance but i can't live without it now um i spray the urban decay all nighter spray now i use two different setting sprays i use max six, six plus once my whole face is done but i use this first and it makes my makeup stay so much longer i hate putting this last I like it under my base, but after my primer. So, I'm just going to spray my face. The pump is not working on mine, really. So, you have to, like, oh, it feels so good. Um, it's, it's weird. So, if I look awkward doing this, that's why. Oof, there we go. I'm going to speak one. And then, I just use whatever cardboard I have hanging around to... Brush my too too what too fan my face. <sighs> this is always like the most relaxing part, except when it gets in your eyes. Um, it really burns when it gets in your eyes. So don't do that. Close your eyes when you're doing it. He looks like the Wicked Witch of the West, but it's just a little face it's just like sticking out from under my dresser. It is very cute. Okay, so um, I'm gonna put on a lip balm, and I usually use Nivea, but I don't know where it went. So I'm gonna use the Zoella Soft Snow one because that's what's like. Snow soft. I, I hate it when I have, um, when you read something wrong, I don't know, uh, cause that's just like, this is just the one I have. It's hard with long nails, but whatever. Um, so I'm sure you've seen this. If everybody on YouTube does it, 
but it just keeps my lips nice and soft so that when I'm ready to put on lipstick, which is at the complete end, even like after setting spray, um, my lips are nice and hydrated. So that's what I do here. Um, I haven't used this much, but it's like fine, so I have no complaints. Okay, so next is foundation. So I use two different ones depending on just like what my mood is. There is the NARS Sheer Glow, and oh god, what shade am I? I'll link it down below, I forget because the sticker fell off. Um, or I have the Too Faced Born This Way, and I am the color Swan in that one. This one I feel like is a little bit higher coverage, but also can maybe look a little bit orange if I'm not careful. Um, this one's a bit more sheer, so we're going to go with this one today, just because I don't want to look orange on like... My first makeup tutorial I feel like I would lose all credibility do I even have any credibility for makeup probably not but that's okay so I just put a little bit on my hand um, using a glass palette would be fancy I think Tati does that um, but I do not anyway so now I have my this looks like a beauty blender I have beauty blenders and I've used them forever um, but this actually isn't this is from shop miss a it was like two dollars and it was another recommendation from a beauty subreddit on Reddit, and I said it was really great, and I'm always like, okay, like, everyone says the dupes are great, but nothing is, like, really like the Beauty Blender. But this actually is, and it was $2 versus, like, what, $25, like, the Beauty Blender or $20. Bucks. Um, so I'll link this and the Beauty Blender down below. It feels a little softer, but it does the exact same thing. So what I do is I just put, like, I don't know, half of it on the tip. I only like using the tip of the Beauty Blender. I don't know why. Um... And I kind of just stipple it all over my face. I always start here on on this side. And um, I focus it in the center because that's usually where like you need the most coverage. And so I start it where I need the most help. And then I kind of just spread out from there. And I just pat it. I do the top of my eyelids too. I know some people don't. But as you can see, I have very dark circles. That's like my main issue. I'm lucky enough that my skin is relatively clear, so I haven't had to deal with too many breakouts in my life. Um, I might have mentioned, or I did mention in a daily vlog, that I recently had my IUD removed, which is a form of birth control, because it I hated it. It just hurt the entire time. It was awful. Um, and so when you do that, when you change forms of birth control, you're changing the kinds of hormones that is in your body. And when that happens, your body can kind of like freak out a little bit. So mine's doing it. So if you see any redness, that's from that. So I'm just like dealing with it until it settles down, which should be like in a month or so. I think I need more. My skin needs more today. So I'm going to get a little bit more. And it's important to go down your neck. And don't stop there because when the light hits you and you see like I think both sides one side will be foundation and one won't so I kind of just bring it there's not much on the sponge but there's enough that it kind of all flows next we are going to go into concealer so the only concealer I use I'm like reaching for everything to my I, on my vanity so excuse that um I love the um Tarte shape tape okay so as you can see, maybe you can't see because it's pretty bright, um, but I my under eye circles are like basically purple. It's like the color of the veins on my wrist. So dark, it's genetic. Doesn't matter how much sleep I get, um, it's just they're there. They're there all the time. And I first realized that that was weird when in grade eight somebody's like, you have really dark circles. So that was before I wore any makeup, makeup and I was like, oh god, I have to start wearing makeup now. So yay for pressure um so anyways yes so shape shape is the only concealer ever that covers everything I love it so much um for days that I need extra coverage I'll put concealer on underneath my foundation and then I can put it then I put the foundation and then I put some more concealer on top and it covers it even more um but today it's fine so what I do is I do how do they do it on YouTube there we go okay so I put, I know it looks like a lot, but 
it's not enough for me um so i put it all the way into the corner of my eye obviously not in my eye but it's super purple in there for me so i can't leave that part out or it will look like it will just stand out so i do it on both eyes that got too close to my eye oh my god i do it on the side of my nose down my nose a little bit on my chin and then on any little spots that i have i have a sunspot there that i can't see right now okay that's not a bad thing anyway and um then i do a little bit on my forehead i used to not do this much but i found it just looks more polished that way and then i blend it out and so the reason why i put on everything first is because i don't know what the term is called i don't think it's baking um but if i let the concealer sit for like a minute or so it has much higher coverage than if i blend it right away so i blend everywhere on my face except for under my eyes right away um, and then when I get to under my eyes, the concealer is kind of like, I don't know if it's just like warmed to my skin tone or something, um, but it, it has higher coverage or it sticks better or something. I don't know. All right. And so now we are going to go with the under eye. Um, I start from the outer corner and I blend in and then I gradually go into the center. So I make sure to get the corner or the outer corner of my eye because that area can be purpley too. And then we slowly go into the middle or the, the inner corner and then I do the eyelid. I know some people do like their eye makeup first before they do their skin and I have no idea how they do it. Like I don't get it because um, my eyelids are still so purple so that like they need the concealer and the way I put my makeup on I always blend it up and onto my eyelid so I just I can't imagine trying to do foundation and not trying to avoid eyeshadow there would just be like this like harsh line on my eye I think I don't know so there we go the base is almost done so now I set my face with powder okay clearly I'm not a professional because <laughs> everything's just falling my vanity is actually a complete mess and I'm moving soon which is very very exciting I said it in the vlog but the vlog hasn't gone up yet um but I have found a condo to move into um and I'm so excited to show you the tour I have to move in like a month so like holy crap um it's getting really soon and I have to pack up my whole life and there is so much crap here okay um so anyways uh I'm using now I'm gonna set my face with powder I use right now Tarte's um smooth operator it's like it's fine I prefer god I don't even know what it's called the MAC setting powder this translucent setting powder um loose or in a little press compact compact I don't care um the loose one though I wear contact lenses and sometimes I don't know it's just in the air and then it sticks my contact and it doesn't hurt but it's like you just see this cloud and it's I, I hate it. Do you guys have that too? So whenever I apply it, I make sure to close my eyes. So I just put some in the lid. I dip this brush, and this brush is the MAC 150 brush. Again, I'll link it down below. I put a little bit, not too much, and then I tap it to get the excess off. Close my eyes. Start with my eyes first. And I press because the most makeup is there, so I want to set the area first with like when I have the most powder on my brush and then I kind of just go down my face I don't get any more powder I just use the residual powder on the brush and then I go in with another little dab tap it and then go on with the other eye and so sometimes it creases on my eyelid but if when that happens I just blend it out after this step with the beauty blender and then it's fine okay so next I am going to contour. This is my favorite step. Oh my god. I remember before I contoured, I was so nervous because I had no idea where to apply the contour. And my first time I did it, it was in a plane when I was flying to Australia to meet my ex. And I did it in like plane lighting, if you can imagine what that is. And um, I did a very light amount, so I'm pretty sure like it wasn't even visible, but like that was totally scary for me. So for contouring. I use Max Harmony, which is this, and um, I also use Max Brush. The 
168 contour brush. This used to be white. It's clean. It's just stained over the years. Um, so I put it in until you can see a lot. I don't put that much on my face. Don't worry. I untap it. I half expected the dogs to go crazy because I normally do when they hear knocking. Um, even if it's not the door. And so first, I put it here. I'm blending this out, don't worry. So I start at the corner, I, I like my hairline. And when you suck in, you get that kind of, the hollows of your cheek. You follow that, and then I stop right around here. And, um... I know it's weird to kind of like put powder everywhere and then blend it out, but that's what I think to work for me. So next, I just do a little couple taps on the bottom of my nose because it shortens the nose. Then I very gently do a little bit on the sides just to kind of highlight or make it look more narrow. My nose is my least favorite thing. One day I'll probably get it altered. <laughs> um, and if you want a video on that, let me know. Um, I think that you can still love yourself and then change some things if you don't um, love it or if you think you'll look better with a little shift. So anyways, um, but there's also nothing wrong with loving who you are. Um, I am quite happy with myself with or without it, um, but like with or without the change in my nose, but um, I don't know. So I'm still thinking over it. Anyway, so um, what I just did was I put, used the remaining product on my brush to kind of blot at the temples and then around the edges of my hairline and that just kind of, it just creates a nice shadow I find and then I go back and I blend the cheek contour and you want to blend up, don't blend down wherever you put it, blend it up from there, don't blend it down, I used to do that and then I heard it was wrong. So. And then I take the rest and I kind of just go under my jaw. You don't want to go too heavy on this because it, it kind of does define your jawline, which is why I'm doing it. But if you do it too much, people can see it. And it just looks like you have a smear of mud underneath your jawline. So the way I do it, I cannot believe I'm doing this online, is I pull my chin in just to check. And then I pull it out and I go like where the bone is. And pull it down and then you check again to see does it look natural or does it look um does it look like you have like a splash of mud on your face or a mud smear or whatever and as I'm blending you can see I kind of go like this so that um I still have a guide in what to follow so that looks pretty natural. I don't know how it looks on camera like that, but in real life it looks natural. Also, um, when you're putting on makeup for camera, you have to do it heavier than the way that you do it in day-to-day -day life because it just like, it cuts the makeup in half. Like you think you look fine and then you go on TV and you're like, did I not do makeup that day? It's shocking. Yeah. Like if, even if your lashes are really nice, I'm blessed with really long lashes, um, but it doesn't matter how much mascara I put on when I'm filming and I'm editing later, it looks like I have no lashes. So uh, if you notice a shift in the last year, it's because I started wearing falsies during, um, while filming, and on camera, it looks like how I look in real life without false lashes, but um, I have to, but like if I don't wear them, it just looks like nothing. Anyways, so next up is bronzer. So I am using um, Hoola bronzer, and I just used the little brush that it comes with. I already kind of dabbed it in as I was talking. Um, there's nothing wrong with using brushes that come in, like, with palettes. A lot of people are like, no, you should, like, only use your own. But, you know, if it works, then it works. Like, what is this snobbiness coming from? I don't get it. So I'm very <laughs> low on it. So I just kind of, like, dab it in and then tap it off. You always want to tap the excess off. I also blow it. And then I kind of run it around the perimeter of my face. I start where the contour is and I bring it in and I feel like it just like softens the border of the contour and then I because I hold the brush like that when I'm doing that and then I rotate it 
and then I do the forehead and then I do it on the other side I put a little more on and then I go down my neck because I don't want it to just be like only foundation on my neck because then I've just bronzed my face and then that would look weird but yeah I know every time I've been on TV which is only three, three times and the makeup people come to like touch up my makeup before I go on they're like did you put on bronzer no I'm like, I did but it's so such a small amount that you can't see um but yes anyways so that is what I do and so at least in real life where you can kind of see that I have some dimension to my face the contour isn't too extreme it might look extreme on camera in person it looks natural so please believe me and not end um so now I do my brows sometimes I use blush but not all the time just because I feel like I flush quite a lot naturally so I don't really need it and when I put on blush, I guess because I'm not used to it, it feels like I'm wearing so much makeup, but it does kind of fill up my face. So when I do wear it, I use Party by Tarte. I'll link it below. Um, but I don't know where my blush brush is. It's really hard to say. So we're just not going to use it today. So next step is eyebrows. This is one of my favorite steps. I don't know why I like it. Um, I'm using Sephora's brush. It's the Pro Brow 20. It has the little angled brush on one end and then the spoolie so what I do first maybe I'll like zoom you in so you can see we're in focus okay good so I brush my brows all the way up and I kind of wiggle it and rotate the spoolie to grab any little hairs that didn't want to come the first brush okay and then um, I use brow powder because I like it um I, I've tried using a brow pencil but it takes forever so I use my brow powder I use Anastasia 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 I never know which way to go on that um Beverly Hills medium brown they have a blonde one but I think it's too light for me and I like darker brows so it looks like this and so when I so okay I break my brows in two sections so first I do the tails on both of them. So to do that, I mix both. So I kind of just go on like the line, like the, the, in the little where they meet and I put the brush in like that. So you get both colors and then I tap it. And then we do the tail. I always do this side first. I don't know why. Um, and I start at the bottom of the brow and then I blend it upwards and that looks the most natural I think I, this is not me trying to brag but people have complimented me on my brows and I feel so happy about that because like I love to do them so I'm not saying that I am a brow expert at all but um, it felt nice when I got complimented so that is like the general arch and then I blend up to kind of fill in the rest of the arch sometimes I need a little bit more product So now we are going into like the middle to the front end of the brow. So I just use the lighter powder and I tap it in. And since there is still probably some residual dark on the brush, that's what we are also working with. And so that's when I do the middle section. So again, I start at the bottom. And blend it into the darker section and pull upwards and I don't think you can tell that there's like different shades on my eyebrows after the fact but since the tails are smaller it just looks better and they're more defined with the darker and then since like this part of my brow is bigger um, and there's more hair there I don't need the darker shade so much okay my whole camera just froze and that was terrifying okay. Um, so, like, I don't want to buy a new camera, but it seems like it's working now. Okay, so as you can see, all the brows are filled in, but they look a little weird still. 
keep brushing. I hope that's like a good brow day. Especially because I'm filming and like today is the day needs to be good. Okay, so now if you can kind of see, it's a little uneven underneath still. So what I get is my little beauty blender and I like press my nail next to the tip so that I have a lot of control over it and I press it just below the eyebrow and it like cleans up the the line and it straightens it back out can you see hopefully you can um, so I do that at the front or I do it around here if I don't like the way that the arch went it doesn't fix like a massive mistake or anything like that but it kind of just like straightens the line if it's like a little bit wonky I need to pluck there okay okay anyways yeah so they are done so now I set my brows with brow gel but it's not actually brow gel um I use the great lash by Maybelline clear one after I take it out of the container I kind of just rub off wipe off the excess on the lip of the bottle because I don't want gloopy eyebrows and then I start from here and then I go to the tail and they usually stay all day except when your boyfriend is trying to be cute and like rubs your face with his thumb and then he moves your eyebrow he's done that he knew he saw me do like a micro flinch when he did that <laughs> he was like oh my god what did I do so all right good so the brows are done now is eyeshadow okay so I use naked three I have a ton of eyeshadow palettes if you would like to see a makeup collection video let me know um but it could be anything from any palette um like I I just could choosing this for this video but um my technique is pretty much the same no matter what palette I'm using what I do is I have noticed that my eyes I think they are slightly hooded I need to add a shadow not eyeshadow but just like create a look of a shadow here or else I look so young and there's nothing wrong with looking young but I just I need a little bit of depth to my eyes and I just it does not look good it looks good while I'm doing my makeup if I don't put anything there and then I go outside and I'm like oh my god are you like 12 years old um nothing wrong with being 12 years old I just I'm 28 I don't need to look 12 so is over. Um, I always put a shadow here and then I put a darker shadow in the corner and then I usually put a shimmer on the lip. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, that basic theory can be applied to any palette. I have Naked 3. I also have Naked Heat sitting like right over there and like that would be the same thing. It would just be like a little bit more orange versus like the pinky tone. I love the pinky tones in this palette though. I found that when I'm filming for, yeah, filming for YouTube, that's the only thing I'm filming for, um, lighter eye looks look better on me. If I do it too heavy, it looks weird. Um, so I guess that's just what we'll do today. So I like to use the brush that came with it. I know some people don't, but I think it's great. So I use the fluffier end and I'm going to go into limit and then tap. And I hate the mirror because it's too narrow. I need to see all of my face. Even if I'm not working on the whole face, I need to see it in like the grand scheme of things. So, focus back on my face. Thank you. Maybe we'll go on closer. Oh my god. Okay. We're gonna do the eye first. I always have to do this eye first. For everything, I have to put shoes on on my right side first or it feels completely off. I close my eye and I just bring it around the outside of the socket. And then I just blend it out. And when I blend it out, I try to go into a little point, general, and like a general point, not like too specific. I've never used scotch tape on my eyes to create that like really sharp line. So as you can see, I added some shadow, more shadow than there. It's just like I add some depth to my eye. And then I'm gonna go onto the other eye and do the same thing. So now I'm using Nooner, which is just like a deeper shade of 
the kind of similar shade range and I'm pressing it in to the outer corner and then I bring it up into like the outer half of the crease and I extend it along this line like where the eyeliner would and will be and then I blend it out. Okay, so there we go. That's how it looks now. And, all right, what do we do next? I forgot. Okay, so there's two different ways I'm going to do this. I'm going to show you the quicker version, but if you would like to see the more glam version, I can do that in another video. Um, so, what I do next, I get the Beauty Blender again. And I'm going to run it underneath here, pressing like how I press with the eyebrow, but making sure I'm not using the eyebrow side. Where is the eyebrow side? Okay. And it just straightens it out, as you can see, and it cleans it up because I love my winged eyeliner and this makes it nice and crisp for it. The key is to make it <laughs> the same angle on both eyes, which can be tricky. And it gives that nice crisp line, as you can see. Okay, so next is highlighter. I love this part so much. Um, this is my Burberry highlighter. If you guys don't know yet, Burberry is like the mothership. I love Burberry. One day, I will have like a Burberry closet, but today is not that day. Um, so the highlighter I use is by Burberry. And it is the spring summer 2016 but it's still available in stores white number one highlighting palette okay so this is how used mine is this is the fresh one it looks very different as you can see it looks like lace it's so pretty um i'm very pale i'm usually the palest um out of all the foundations so anything that isn't white for a highlighter it just looks weird it's like why is there just like a smear of glittery color on my face so I like to use the brush that comes with it it just looks like this um, because I mean it works so whatever so I swirl it in the sad little pan there is still some left I can still get it and then I just brush it down here so a little up this side and then here and then it gives that beautiful shot I don't know how to do this how do you pose like this on camera like that can you see the shine like this I think so so pretty Remember. and then I just continue on the other side and then I take the remaining left on the brush so I don't put on any extra I don't put any extra on the brush and I just go over the tip of my nose not too much you don't want to have too much on your nose do not be a reindeer um, or Rudolph and then I go down the bridge just so that the light follows it and then I do the same thing on my forehead so you can kind of see it doesn't look glittery God, I hope not no but it just attracts the light then then what I do is I get my little mini highlighting brush I don't even know if it's supposed to I think it's supposed to be a concealer brush this is from Sephora I thought it was pretty because it looks like that then I, I go into one of the little cubes that still has highlighter in it and I do my cupid's bow so I will bring you in to my phone. it's weird okay and I hold the brush vertically and I just do this and that gives me this little highlight. Sometimes I do it underneath my lip too. And it just creates like a little bit more of a pout look. Then you're going to go up to my eyes and do basically the same thing, but we are going to put it on the center of the lid. Look at how pretty. Oh my gosh.
And then I'm going to get that brush from the Naked 3, I think call it, um, that still has the eyeshadow on it. And I'm just going to go over the edges of the eyeshadow because I don't want the highlighter to take, to take up the entire surface of my eye. So I kind of just go over it and it kind of just softens the border between them and blends a little bit to make it not too much about the brow bone, you know what I mean? Okay, so now onto eyeliner, which is my favorite, I say everything is my favorite part. This completes the look. I don't like looks without this, typically. Um, so I tight line my eyes and then I line my eyes. So for tight lining, I use two. I either use one from Sephora, which I will also link down below, or this one, the NARS Larger Than Life Long Eyeliner. It's just the black one, I don't know. And I know this looks disgusting but we're gonna do it anyway. I don't like touching my lid because I feel like it takes off the eyeshadow. Oh, I'm gonna have to do it anyway. Or just you use your eyelashes to hold it up. It tickles so much. Oh my God. So on days where I'm not wearing winged liner, I still tight line my eyes because I feel like it just fills in the base of your lashes and it makes your lashes look fuller, even if they're not. Oh my god, that's weird. And I don't do it on the bottom because it's just, my eyes look so small that way. Not a good look on me. Not a good look. Okay. So now this is like my favorite product. It hurts to buy, but it's my favorite product. Um, this is the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen in Black, 01 Deeper. This was a recommendation by Tati as well. By the way, I am Team Tati if we're if you're curious. I mean, obviously. Um, anyways, <laughs> this is expensive, but it is amazing. It's heavier than most eyeliner pens, so it does take a little bit of getting used to. But if I sleep in this, it will stay. A wing a beautiful wing it holds through everything better than the Kat Von D which she's anti back so I don't shop from her anymore anyway but better than that better than the steel one better than everything I've tried it is so deeply black and perfect and I love it it is expensive um, and every time I buy it it hurts me on the inside and then whenever I'm using it I'm happy I bought it so this is like my fifth or sixth one of them I, I've been using it for years so what I do because I know liquid liner can be tricky for some people. Um, hopefully my technique will make it easier for you. So we're gonna go close. We're gonna focus on my eye camera, okay? And I'm gonna show you what I do. So if I look down, it's because the mirror is like here. So what I do first is I do the outer stroke on both eyes so that we're getting the right angle and the same angle and yes, little brush it had like a little I made a mistake when I put the cap on anyway okay so there's one so then the next one has to be at the same angle and you can sometimes I use the the eyeshadow as a guide to do that all right so once that's done, then we go in and we make it like an outer triangle. So don't feel bad. Don't think that like everyone who does eye like wings just goes like that and it's done. No. So, and I never, I'm going to say never and it's like <laughs> going to happen today. I, I, once in six months do I screw this up so this technique works. Um, so then I go and I make a little triangle like that. Can we see it? And then we fill that part in. Don't worry about the rest of the eye. So as you can see, that's been done. So now I kind of just blend it out and extend the wing a little bit more to make it look more natural and blend like the thicknesses together. You know what I mean. 
blend the tail with the little triangle. So it looks like that. And then we're gonna go in and work towards the center. So I actually start at the center corner and I kind of just, I hold the, the, the pen this way and I kind of just stamp and glide. So we start here. Oh my God, it's tickling me. There we go. So you can see I have a fine line. That's all we want right now. And then we're gonna connect that line with that triangle. And make it a little bit thicker if we need to. Um, but yeah, so the reason why we do the wings, the little tails at the same time is so that they're at the same angle and then we can go in individually and like do the little finish everything off. So I will speed this side up so that you can see me do it in like realish time or faster than that because how long has this video been? Um, and then I'll see you for mascara. Okay, so eyeliner is done. I hope you like it. I hope this helped. Um, if it was a bad angle, let me know and I can reshoot it and do it like a, a dedicated video on it. Ugh. So next, once the camera decides to focus back on my face, there we go, we are going, oh, there's my lip balm. Um, I'm losing my mind. Mascara. So I use mascara whether or not, whether I have fashion. I use mascara whether I have false lashes on or not, just because I like big lashes. Um, my favorite is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. I use this when I don't wear falsies because it looks like I'm wearing falsies in real life, not on camera. Nothing can help you on camera except for falsies. Um, but it's so good. So this is the tube. And I apply it. I think I got this tip from Carly Bible, I think. Um, but I put it at the base and I rotate the brush as I wiggle it upwards and I do like I don't even know how many coats this is in my mind it's one because it's like one time one moment spent on the eye but that's probably wrong and then after that we go on the other side of the eye and that is the key to having long looking eyelashes go on the top and rotate the wand as you pull out and it will coat the other side of your lashes and then as soon as you do that brush it the regular way again and that will give you a much longer appearing lashes so you can keep going back and forth until it's at the stage that you like I like dramatic looking lashes I don't I don't like natural looking lashes so I don't like natural ones, but I like um, having a full lash, and I've been lucky enough that my lashes are relatively long, so um, I like to play that up and make them even longer. So after one like little session. Oh my, I don't curl my eyelashes and I should. Um, this is how it looks versus nothing. And then we're going to do it on the other eye and then we're going to come back and do it again on the first eye. So we're doing two rounds on each eye. Okay, so mascara is done. And now I'm going to do the mascara on my lower lash line, lower lashes. So my lower lashes are very long. Um, that's not like humble brag or anything like that. It's just, I don't know, it's just is what it is. So I don't like putting too much mascara on it because then I feel like it looks too like doll-like, if you know what I mean. It drags the eye downwards. Um, my eyes already kind of like go down. 
on the edge so we want to I want to keep it looking up that's why I don't put any eyeshadow underneath either it's just all like up top so I use Chantikai just because I convinced my mom to buy it to try and she didn't like it so she gave it to me and not much comes off on the brush and the brush is much smaller um than the better than sex mascara so when I use the better than sex mascara on my lower lashes it's, just, it's too big it doesn't work so this is just what I have so you don't need to go and buy this it's ridiculous um but I just gonna touch it and wiggle to the outside to the lower lash just like the outside half and then that's it so as you can see I got mascara on the top so we what it, the trick is if you wait for it to dry then you get your spoolie and you just go like this and it flakes off and you're good so if you get it across the bridge of your nose which I've done before um wait for it to dry and then spool it off and you're good you don't need to go like foundation concealer like that whole crazy thing again but now I'm gonna zoom out because you've seen too much of my face okay um ugh. now I'm going to set my face um max fix plus that's what I use I'll never use anything else and I use so much but it's so good and it's so refreshing and where is my little cardboard which is a Dior lipstick sample mm. okay so um now we are on to the lips which is the last step it always looks weird without the lips on so there are two that I use and that's pretty much the only thing that you see in my videos I cannot find the other one one of them is Burberry and I love Burberry um and it's a little bit more sheer and it's pink um it's it's like a great like your lips but better my lips but better whatever um lipstick yes it's lipstick um but it doesn't allow you to really like overline your lips and this one does and when I wear this one I feel a little bit more glam so this came from a rec recommendation from Lisa Eldridge not like to me personally I'm not that special um but on her channel uh so this is the Revlon Ultra HD matte lip color in embrace I have used a full one of this. It takes so much for me to actually use up lipstick. This and the Burberry one is the only one that I've actually used and then repurchased. Um, and I feel like the new one is darker than the one I used before. I don't know. Um, but in the last year or so, if you've watched my video, <laughs> um, this is what I've been wearing. So yeah, we're just going to put it on and I overline it a little bit. Not so much. I, I hope not. I hope you guys don't think that. Um, so that it makes my lips look a little bit full. Um, but not like... Kylie Jenner or anything like that. Okay, and there we go. So that is my finished face. I hope that you like this tutorial. Um, it feels so weird doing this when normally I do cooking videos, but I hope it was fun for you guys after after I take these off I always feel like it'd be cuter if I just left them on but I don't know if that's socially acceptable yet um but yeah so I hope that you guys liked this video if you like it and you want me to like make more I guess let me know um but yeah this is the look I do basically every day for all the videos I'm in um I know a lot of you guys have been asking like so much for me to do in my makeup tutorial so I'm really really uh flattered that you guys wanted to know um but yeah if you have any questions let me know down below and I can answer them and yeah I love you guys so much and um next Sunday will be the return of my weekly vlog anyways yeah I love you guys so much and um yeah thank you so much for watching